This video is sponsored by Bespo Post. More on them later. The orbital flight test is just around the corner. Starship conducted a 31 engine static fire. However, this was not even close to the final thrust it would have during the orbital flight. Let's look at the countdown, compare some numbers and look at what's next for Starship on its path to orbit and if this will be the last static fire. I'm Adrian Bile from NASA Spaceflight, let's get into it. Let's first recap the thrust numbers of the recently conducted 31 engine static fire and see what we can learn from that. For the new people who might have missed it. Initially, this was planned as the 33 engine static fire. This is the attempt to fire all the engines below super heavy booster. One engine was turned off before the test and one stopped during the firing. So overall, 31 engines were fired for this test. Fair warning, upcoming are some numbers. Do not worry, I will make it as easy as possible and give you a nice handy TLDR if you struggle to follow these numbers. But we need these to understand the scope of this test and compare it to the other rockets and the path ahead. Let's look at the info on thrust we have. According to Elon Musk, this test was at about 50% throttle, while the flight will be at about 90% throttle. SpaceX tweeted that this test was conducted with a 7.9 million pound force of thrust, which translates to roughly 35 mega newton. Knowing that the final stack will have about 74.58 mega newton of potential thrust, based on each Raptor producing 2.26 mega newton at 100% throttle, and that they will abuse about 90% of that, brings the thrust of Super Heavy at liftoff for the OFT to 67.12 mega newton or almost double the thrust of this test. TLDR. This does mean that as of now, Starship did not overtake SLS with its roughly 39 mega newton. However, it is now ahead of Saturn V, which produced roughly 34.5 mega newtons of thrust. This also means that for now, the Starship pad only had to endure about half the forces it would have to resist during the orbital flight. While it handled this test with great success, it has a bit of an increasing thrust to endure before we can finally determine if it will hold during this inferno. Also, before somebody points it out, yes, the N1 in theory is still the rocket with the most thrust ever produced with its 45.4 mega newton. However, it is questionable how much of this thrust was ever reached as the rocket was plagued with early flight engine issues and multiple engines shutting down early into the flight. Let's talk some countdown. But before we do that, I want to throw it over to Jack at Starbase for some talk about today's sponsor, Jack. Thanks, Adrian. I'm hanging out at Starbase thanks to our sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post's monthly membership sends you cool, top-shelf goods from under-the-radar brand. Each box of awesome has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. Plus, 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small brands, many of which are based right here in the US. I got the Retreat Box, the Dram Box, and the Crackle Box. You can see the Crackle Box came with this sweet mini one-log fireplace and all the things you need to make s'mores. Plus, this cute book of campfire stories, perfect for sharing around Starbase. The Dram Box comes with two excellent whiskey glasses, two jumbo ice ball molds that are super easy to use, a field guide to whiskey by Hans Offringer, and an eight ounce bottle of delicious old fashioned mixer. I love whiskey. Only pay for what you want. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you each month based on the quiz you take when signing up. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd like to one, keep it, two, swap it for a different box on offer, or three, skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. You only pay for what you want. Plus, the box lineup changes every month. To get 20% off your first box of awesome, click the link in the description and enter code NSF20 at checkout or visit bespokepost.com NSF20. Thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Thanks, Jack. I really want to check this out as well. Looks like a lot of fun. In this segment, I want to give you an overview of the rocket's countdown and talk about why this countdown was not that different from the WDR and possible launch. 
even though it had a much lower fuel load. We will start after the road closure and after the initial chill down of the ground service equipment. This took several hours and there were multiple recycles during this, hence me skipping this step as it would be hard to pick apart and analyze. After multiple recycles to fuel the rocket, the final OLM vent started at 1.43.40. This vent most likely indicates that the lines to the rockets are in the chill down in preparation to let cryocooled liquids flow through them. This OLM vent stopped at 1.52. Fast for a chill down. This made sense with the multiple attempts as the equipment was probably cooled down from the previous chilling, hence it is moving a bit faster. With this stop, fueling had begun. The WDR took 1 hour and 15 minutes from here to T0. For the static fire it was 1 hour and 22 minutes, so very much in the same ballpark. The difference here might be the multi-minute hold that was observable on the SpaceX stream on the test. This could have a different length or did not happen on the WDR. You might ask, why did the full fueling of the rocket take about the same time as the static fire, which had an empty methane tank? The answer to this is most likely that the time is not limited by the overall percentage of the rocket that is fueled, but by the individual tank's fuel status. With the LOX tank being full on both tests, they probably needed about the same time to get to 100% on it. Hence it is the pacing factor for the fueling duration. So TLDR for the orbital test. Look out for a fueling duration of about 1 hour and 50 to 25 minutes before the orbital flight. Also, expect some struggle with the GSE, as SpaceX aborted pre-fueling multiple times before proceeding to fuel the rocket. This GSE is really a beast to get into the right condition to support such a launch. Moving over to stage 0, booster and GSE for some damage analysis. And the surprising thing here is that there's not that much damage. As you could hear on our cameras, some concrete flew during the fire. But besides that and some charring on the legs of the orbital launch mount, it seems the pad and the booster are relatively unharmed. We saw similar charrings on the legs before and this can be fixed with some new protective paint. Nothing has been observable in terms of major damage to the pad, tanks or the booster itself. Of course, this pad will still have to endure double the thrust in the future. But with the deluge system on its way and additional shielding on the OLM being prepared, SpaceX is working on mitigations for these high energy tests. The shielding for the OLM will be installed before the flight test, with the deluge system being a bit more unknown. Stay tuned to see if it makes its way to the pad before the launch. With the two Raptors it of course begs the question if they were just overly careful or if the two engines are damaged and need replacement. Friendly reminder, this was intended to be a 33 engine static fire. But SpaceX disabled one engine before the firing and one performed an abort during the fire. This warrants some inspection into the causation of this if not replacing the engines completely. <laughs> Let's look at the path ahead. After the static fire we saw a spin prime test of a single engine, which might have been one of the faulty two, and a test of the booster QD system two times. With this the booster maybe just conducted its last major milestone before orbital. Of course SpaceX could decide to repeat these tests until all 33 engines work flawlessly, but so far we lack any indication that this is the plan. Should this be the last static fire, which seems to be the case right now, Next up would be the stacking of Ship 24 on the top of the Booster 7. Ship 24, since our last update, had its crane attachment points removed and tiles installed. It is getting prepared in the rocket garden for its job as the second stage of the flight. After the stacking, we could see a few more checkout tests and final steps before the FAA license and hardware readiness would clear the path for the orbital launch. We are certainly very close, closer than we are probably ever were and an orbital flight in March or April seems much more likely than initially thought. That's it for our quick numbers overview of the orbital launch path and the test of 31 engines. For sure a giant milestone for the Starship program and maybe one of the last to orbit. Be sure to get your box of awesome from Bespoke Post and get 20% off your first order. Click the link in the description and enter code NSF20 at checkout or visit bespokepost.com slash NSF20. 
Thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. I'm Adrian Beil for NSF. Thanks for watching and let us know your feedback and thoughts on the road ahead in the comments below.